Have you ever wondered how seismic analysts locate earthquakes? Or maybe why earthquake solutions change over time? Well, follow along to locate an earthquake in interior Alaska. Imagine it's Monday morning. You walk into the office, sit down at your desk, and find a map of the state of Alaska with circles representing earthquakes. For a seismic data analyst, a map like this represents one eight-hour time segment of seismic data. This particular map has 42 automatically detected events, and these events are recorded on over 250 seismic stations located across the state. Your job is to refine these automatic solutions. This is A Day in the Life of a Seismic Data Analyst, the Alaska Earthquake Center edition. Before we can start refining the automatic solutions, we need to understand the fundamentals of earthquake location with a seismic network. Let's take the state of Alaska and assume that the stars in the Big Dipper and the North Star are seismic stations. An earthquake happens in interior Alaska near Fairbanks. The first seismic station to record this earthquake will be the closest to its epicenter. We'll call it station A, and the recorded waveforms might look something like this. Farther away, station B records waveforms that might look something like this. And finally, the farthest station, station C, records waveforms that might look something like this. We can see that with increasing distance, the waveforms arrive later and later. The first step to processing these waveforms for an earthquake location is to indicate the arrival of the primary wave, or P wave, which is a compressional wave corresponding to vertical ground motion. The P wave is the first impulsive arrival at each seismic station. For station A, it's here station B here, and station C here. Next, we need to locate the arrival of the secondary wave, or S wave. This is a shear wave and corresponds to side-to-side -side ground motion. The S wave is the second impulsive arrival in our waveforms and can be located here for station A, and similarly for station B here, and station C here. Now we have a collection of P and S wave arrivals that we can use to calculate an earthquake location and event time. We do this through solving an inverse problem, which means that we use observed data, our P and S wave arrivals, paired with an earth velocity model to back calculate the location and time of an earthquake. Now we're ready to tackle some real data. The blue star is an automatically located earthquake in interior Alaska recorded by these seismic stations in red triangles. If we pull the waveforms for this earthquake, we have a data panel that looks like this. In this data view, we can see groupings of three with each station acronym. The top trace is the east-west horizontal ground motion recording. The middle trace is the north-south horizontal ground motion recording. And finally, the bottom trace is the vertical ground motion recording, making up complete record from the three component seismometer installed at this station. Next, we notice that the earthquake arrives later and later, indicating that these stations are arranged with the station closest to the epicenter at the top and increasing distance as you move down through the data. Additionally, we can see that there are some P and S wave arrivals already provided by the automatic solution. If we look at the stations that have automatic data, we can pick out where they are on the map. The first station is located here. The third station is located here. The fourth station here. And the sixth station here. And finally, the fifth station on our waveform view doesn't show the earthquake signal above the background noise, which means that this station is too noisy to use in our location. So let's clean up our waveform view and take a closer look. Now with our cleaned up data view, we are only interested in stations that have a good record of the earthquake. Take a look at these four stations. We can see the earthquake signal on every station. We can also see that there is a range of data provided by the automatic solution. The top station has partial information with only a P arrival. The second station has no automatically provided arrivals. The third station has complete automatic information with both, an high, both a high quality P and S arrival. And finally, the last station shown here has again only partial information with an automatically provided S arrival that needs some adjustment. To fully process this earthquake, 
we check the P arrival on the first station and add an S arrival. On the second station, we add both a P and an S arrival. On the third station, we check the automatically provided P and S arrivals. On the fourth station, we adjust the automatically provided S arrival to a more appropriate location and additionally add a P arrival. We continue this process looking at all stations that have a clear earthquake signal. Finally, we have an analyst reviewed solution that includes information from the automatically generated solution as well as additional arrivals added at these stations outlined by green triangles. Comparing the solutions side by side, we find that the analyst solution includes 14 stations while the automatic solution included six. There are nearly three times more P arrivals picked in the analyst solution than in the automatic solution. There are 10 more S picks in the analyst solution than in the automated solution. The depth of the earthquake has changed slightly. And we can see here that the magnitude has changed a fair amount. In the automatic solution, the magnitude was calculated to be 1.4, whereas in the analyst solution, the magnitude is calculated to 0 0.8. The increase in the number of S arrival picks in the analyst solution helps refine this calculation for magnitude. So this is why earthquake solutions change over time. There's a difference between what is provided in the automatic solution and what is provided in an analyst reviewed solution. Chiefly, analyst reviewed solutions include significantly more data than the automated solutions, which provides a better magnitude estimate along with depth and location. Congratulations, you've just helped process a small earthquake in interior Alaska. But as I'm sure you're aware by now, Alaska is quite seismically active. This is a map of seismicity from 1960 to 2020, and it includes 390,000 individual events. So, if the day in the life of a seismic data analyst includes an eight hour time segment with potentially 42 automatically detected events, a year in the life of a seismic data analyst includes over 50,000 events processed annually, which equates to over 1 million added phase arrivals. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes look at earthquake processing. And don't forget to let us know if you felt an earthquake near you with a Did You Feel It report.